six point seven. So where 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 do I get that? Thirty bytes. So do I use thirty bytes in here, or I have to use something else? Thirty bytes won't work, right? So we have to multiply by that conversion factor. So that is in a file feed something, all right? And that six point seven two, that is the same conversion factor. That is. That is Fine. We have it later. So that factor is a conversion factor from the centipoise to uh, feed bar mass unit. Okay, what about like that? Then we get radio number. Or oh, this is kind of radio number formula, right? So this is a radio number formula. Once we get that, we calculate loss due to friction. F rho v square over two d. F is from Moody diagram, okay? And we have to substitute the value. Length, length is any length. This equation is applicable for horizontal flow, vertical flow, flow up, flow down, it all work, okay? It's for friction pressure loss. So we add all the length, 300, 100, 120, and 20 all together, that is total friction. So this is total friction. All right, so total friction something over G sub C. That's total friction. Uh, I get 85 over G sub C. Uh, so be careful of the unit. In the exam, any number that you write, you need to know the unit, okay? Here's a Moody friction factor. Moody friction factor for, so this time we get, is this turbulent flow, all right? Or laminar flow, that much. Turbulent flow, right, is more than 2100. So it's turbulent flow, we read the chart. So when we read the chart, it depends on the roughness, relative roughness. How do, how do I read, read the chart? This time, the problem statement said, smooth circular pipe. So when it's smooth, it's zero, right? So it's zero, we go up, then we read it, just like that. Okay, the bottom line is for smooth part. Everyone know how to use this already, is it? Yes, I'm going to test you with that. All right, we have um, friction thing, okay? Friction equation, we will talk about it a little bit later. Can we skip this for now? Okay, then we calculate E sub V term, acceleration of pressure loss. What do we have? We have sudden contraction at plane one, Plane one is over here, so it's kind of from very large to a pipe, right? So that accelerational pressure loss is sudden contraction. Then it have uh, after sudden contraction, we have three ninety degree elbow. You agree? Three ninety degree elbow. One, two, three. Okay. Each elbow has the Accelerational loss coefficient of um, 0.5. Where does that 0.5 coming from? A table, right? A table, this table. 0.5, 90 degree elbow, round, so I use 0.5. Okay, when we have 0.5, that take care of all that elbow. Sudden expansion at plane two. It comes from the pump. No, you don't. You don't need to memorize those for example. It will be given. Okay? It will be given. Um, what you need to know is this. This number, it can be 10. Okay? It can be as low as 0.05, but it's not negative. Okay? Okay? If it is negative, this means you have pressure gain. Um, add the, those together, Okay, so sudden expansion, we have V sub V, V square, that is V square, G sub C, add those terms together, I have A over GC. Okay, elevation term, 
Elevation term has to do with the change in the height between plane 1 and plane 2, right? Plane 1 and plane 2, okay? The length from that line to that line. So I have about 105. I think that's what we have over there. So that is to account for um, or minus 20, that is a the palm itself. Uh, that's not 20. Okay, that's that is 20 over there. 100 plus 5 minus that 20. That is elevation term. Pressure term. Do you have the change on the pressure from plane one to plane two? At the plane one, we have atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is zero psig. You familiar with this concept, right? So atmospheric pressure is zero psig. Plane two also zero psig. So there is no change of pressure in in feet. Okay. Velocity, we assume that is the same. So v two equal to v one. Add those numbers together. We get uh, zero, which is that term. That term is 85, this term is zero. That term is another 85 over T sub C. Okay. 85 over T sub C. And this is A over T sub C. Okay. Let's take a look at the magnitude for each term. So I have um, <coughs> Wm uh, almost uh, power from the pump is 85. Multiply by 85, multiply with 32.2. So this height term, the numerical value of that cancel each other, okay? But we put it over that so that the unit is correct. So if I look at this, I see the elevation term is a lot, okay? The friction term is a little bit, okay? Maybe one or two percent or something. And we have some, uh, acceleration of pressure loss. Okay, so this means this term is very small. Add it together, I get W sub M is that much, or W sub G C is 88. Then I multiply with mass flow rate. Mass flow rate in power per second is 12.5. 12.5 multiplied by 88, I get 1,100 power cost per, per second. And I happen to know that one power force foot per second is of 550 power force foot per second is one horsepower. So this is two horsepower, or about 1.5 kilowatt. So this way we can size the pipe, okay? And we don't also know the pressure drop. Any question? No question? Can you do it on the exam? Not right now, okay. Try, try. You've got to be able to do it for the exam. The exam won't be the same. All right, let's go back a little bit for the friction factor calculation. Okay. There are several uh, equations for friction. The reason that we have more than one is that sometimes we have turbulent flow. Yes, question. Is this on this exam or the final? Final. All this is for final. Okay, uh, none of this is for for midterm exam. Um, <clears throat> we have several equations, and what I want you to know is to be able to identify if that equation is for fully developed or not. Most of the time, it is for fully developed. It has no z. It doesn't have anything to do with the distance. This means it's for fully developed, away from the inlet. How far away from the inlet do we need to be fully developed? What do you think? Without any calculation, it is about 10 diameter. Okay, just 10 diameter for turbulent flow. For laminar flow, it can be 30 diameter or 100 diameter. For multi-phase flow, it can be 300, 400 pi diameter. Okay, so it varies. For turbulent flow, just 10 pi diameter it should be good enough. 10 pi diameter means if the pi diameter is one, one foot, 10 feet away from the inlet will be fully developed. 
approximating. Otherwise, open the handbook of heat transfer, there's the equation to calculate the length required for Fourier developed flow. Okay, Fourier developed also means pressure drop per unit length doesn't change with these tens again. So delta P over delta L stay the same. That is where the rock flow. JLT, the U is done now. Okay, the formula for operation factor. There's an easier version, a quicker one. The quicker one has more uncertainty. Uh, <clears throat> the quicker one is if we don't use a shot, but if we do it in Excel, very quick in Excel, so we can automate all this. Friction factor, moody friction factor is constant multiplied by random number to the power of n. n is 1 for laminar flow, n is 0 0.2 for turbulent flow, okay? And the constant C is 16 multiplied by 4 or 64 for uh, laminar flow and that much for turbulent flow. So this will be easy way to calculate it. By the way, this is for smooth pipe. What if we have a rough pipe, we want to calculate it correctly. The, the correct equation that people use, it is called, what was that equation? Is it white, Cobrook white equation, or Cobrook equation? Cobrook equation is implicit form. Okay, I will show you later. The Cobrook equation is a little bit difficult to use. Implicit form means we have one over square root f on both sides. So in order to find friction factor, we need to know friction factor already. So that is a little bit difficult to use. It's required iteration. This is an explicit form, pretty much the same. Okay? It's Hanlan equation, very good one. Okay? This equation, of course, you, need, you should write it down. Why do we need this? What if I read the chart? Uh, okay. I get the value and I do more accurate version and it's not the same that we go with the one by the shadow we we do this. Okay, this equation is very good one, explicit one. We need to know random number. Epsilon is a pipe roughness in the same unit of diameter. If the pipe roughness is in the unit of micron, diameter has to be micron too. Or we convert pipe roughness in, in the same unit of diameter. So if pipe roughness is if diameter is in feet, pipe roughness has to be in feet. Moody, fact, moody friction factor is four times of fanning friction factor. Okay, so there is conversion to be moody and fanning. Uh, this is the discussion that we did already. Any question on this? So this means on the exam, use that. And I don't even need to give you the chart. Okay. So if I don't give you the shot, you cannot do it. It's not my fault anymore, right? But I tell you to write that equation in. That is for turbulent flow. For laminar flow, it's just 64 over random number for moody friction factor. Uh, in this equation, you see for f sub f, f sub f is fanning friction factor. All right, any question on any of these? No, not at all. Okay. Last year, I think we had the question about pressure, uh, pressure gain. So we have the pump, we go up, then we go down. Okay. During the trip that it go down, it actually has pressure gain. You know that, right? So when we go down, we have pressure gain. When we go up, we have a lot more pressure drop because of the elevation. All right, so if I have two situations, two situations, situation one, I have the pump, I go up, maybe I go down. So this is 100 feet. Situation two, I go up and then I go down. Maybe just 20 feet. Can I use the same pipe provided that friction is not much? Can I? What do you think? So both of them, if we calculate it as steady state, steady state, 
friction term, let's say, more or less the same, okay, very small. The longer pipe you have, a lot more friction, okay. But let's say friction term is negligible. Hydrostatic head term is nothing because we go up and then we go down. We cancel each other. Okay. So steady state calculation may say, uh, okay, steady state calculation may say, okay, I need this one, I need 10 horsepower. This one just 20 feet, the length of the pipe is just uh, maybe four horsepower, for example, okay? That is steady state. Another thing that I will worry about is start up. When I start it, I don't have the fluid going down on that leg, right? I don't. So this means I need to have enough discharge pressure to bring the liquid up to that point first, okay? So at least my pump needs to deliver 100 feet so that it can pump onto that point. Yeah. Then when it goes down, we get pressure, okay? So this means when I look at the pump power, initially it requires more and more and more power. When we have flowing down, we require less power. Yeah. Good? So the hydrostatic head term will cancel each other only if we flow down. When we flow down, it cannot create a suction, so we gain pressure. If it doesn't go down, or if it cannot reach that point, steady state calculation doesn't work. Okay? So this means when I design the pump, I have to make sure that it can reach the steady state case. Or this means it can pump until it reaches that point. Or pump until it reaches that point. When it go down, it gets pressure, but when it go up, it loses pressure. When the pipe length is small, it loses pressure to the friction. Good? So both cares cannot use the same pump, and the actual horsepower will be more than 10 horsepower if 10 horsepower just account for the friction. Because hydrostatic head term also need to be accounted for. Question for me? More question? More question? Is it clear? That we we need to design to start up to not just steady state. All right. Uh, let's finish this calculation. Okay. Centrifugal pump. So we can put centrifugal pump in series and in parallel. When we put it in, when we have one pump, two pump in parallel, the line do that. Okay. When I have one pump, two pump in series, the line go up. The line go up means uh, I can kind of increase the pressure. Increase the pressure, so when you put it in series. When I put it in parallel, I kind of increase the flow rate. Yeah, parallel, two pump. So two pump together. And then connect together. This way, we cannot increase the flow rate. Okay. If we have one pump after another pump, like the edge pump, multi-stage technical pump, the reason that it do multi-stage is to increase the pressure. Okay. Now we have to look at the system curve. Okay. Or the system curve is in another slide. Uh, I think it's kind of the same topic, so this is pump two, and I want to show the system curve. Okay, the system curve, we have to look at the system curve too. Let's take a look at centrifugal pump, one pump and two pump. So when I have one pump, it looks like that. Two pump in parallel, it looks like that. And this is my system curve. System curve, okay. Do I have double in flow rate? No. The flow rate go up, but it's not double. So it go up from this point to that point. So, it, so this distance is less than that, right? So when we put two pump in parallel, 
the flow rate go up, but it does not need to double the flow rate. Okay. What about if I put it in series? If I put it in series, it should increase the, the, the pressure, but the pressure may not be double depending on the pump curve too. If we do PD pump, positive displacement time, we put it in parallel, the flow rate will increase nearly double because we physically, mechanically move the volume of fluid forward. Okay? So put the pump in parallel, increase flow rate. Put the pump in series, like an edge pump that I showed you earlier, that increase pressure. Alright, let's go back. That is uh, slide 22 on pump 2. Let's go back to pump 1. Advantages, disadvantages of the centrifugal pump, you have to know about two or one, one or two of them, okay? You will read it, I will go over it a little bit. So advantages of centrifugal pump is inexpensive, relatively inexpensive and no power saving flow. It doesn't have the power, okay? Inside the pump, it doesn't have the power. Um, it can handle liquid containing dirt, abrasive, or large solid, okay? It can operate at low suction pressure. So that's kind of advantageous. Read it, okay? It is not good for viscous fluid, okay? Because it's spinning. If I have bubble, if I have water in oil, kind of some, some bubble and some water in oil, I use a uh, centrifugal pump, it spin, it break bubble, I, I mean it break water droplet into a smaller water droplet. So first maybe I have big water droplet in oil. When it go to the pump, it spin, it break water droplet to a smaller water droplet, that will increase viscosity. So when the fluid droplet becomes finer, it creates a more stable emulsion. Okay? So, stability of emulsion depends on the size of the droplet too. Alright, <clears throat> the rest try to read it, okay? Uh, it's have, okay, one thing to mention is that it has lower maximum efficiency, okay, and it's delivered less pressure than PD pump. Uh, Raynaud number, where does that number come from? Man? You have to write that down, right? Here is the derivation. It's not too difficult. Last year they do it just fine. Two years ago they do it just fine. So this year you will do it just fine too. Okay? The derivation first we start up with the unit consistent. So in pound feet second, the unit of viscosity is pound mass over feet second. So in SI it will be kilogram over meter and second. Okay, that is it next time. So try to go through this derivation and make sure that you can derive that. Okay. Famous unit conversion. Unit conversion is a 125 million dollar problem. Okay. So it is a big problem. In 1999, NASA lost that much. Okay because of miscalculation due to the use of English unit instead of metric unit. Apparently sent the, the craft slowly off course 60 miles an hour. Trust used to help point the spacecraft had over the course month been fine, okay? We go into the wrong direction if we do the wrong unit conversion. So it can cause a, a lot. Here's the conversion. Okay, horsepower is that much BTU per hour or power force foot per second, 550. One horsepower is about 550. Power force foot per second, one kilowatt or 1000 watt is that much BTU per hour. Okay, this is conversion factor for energy. BTU to June, okay, BTU per power to power force foot. G value, okay, pressure conversion, volume conversion. 
and you need this to find an exam. This is not midterm exam too. This is area mass length. All right. Try to have that. Very good. Let's see more pound. We have 25 minutes. That's too much for the new exam. Oh, 15, 15, 15. Is it 15? Yes, it's 15. That's the only time. Sorry. Um, this poem has a bunch of pictures. I thought you could read it. So we will try to go over that next time then. Okay. Exact. Let me show you some pictures. Uh, do you know, have you been there? No, you should get F for the call if you haven't been there. That is the East Campus, okay? Who did not attend that without university, we will give you zero. That is what? Is the reader? That one? We got another out, okay? This one? World of separator. Have you seen that? The test separator is one of them that's the test separator. What about that thing? The white one? Very very recovery tower. Okay. So what is the equipment at the top? What do we put over there? Treasury valve. Okay. And we have what is that thing? Dump valve. What about that? That's the most on. Back pressure regulator, okay. Or oh, you, you may say keep brain if it is up here exam. So this line is for gas or liquid? Yeah. So you will do fine for the exam, okay. And what about this thing? What is it? Rubber recovery unit. And uh, what about that? Cylinder and all that. Inlet scrubber, right? Okay, this is test separator. And what is this thing? Gadgets or labor indicator? Float connect to the dumb valve, right? This connect to that dumb valve. Is it? This inside has a floor that moves up down. Okay, so it should uh, it actuate and it operate this valve to open and close. It's for liquid level. This what is this? A pump. Uh, mm, depending on this pump, is it a typical pump? Maybe? No, it's what gear yeah, pump. It is gear pump. Uh, I don't think I'm going to answer that. Is. I don't quite see the impact. Vapor recovery tower, what's the purpose of that? Do what? <laughs> Are you going to be fine for the exam? What is the purpose of vapor recovery tower? Flash out all the vapor so that we have fluid with lower breed vapor pressure. So this is to meet the gas contract. Remove all the vapor in the liquid phase. Okay. There's a storage tank. And on the top of the tank they connect to each other and go to vapor recovery unit. Right. Middle run. Uh, a tank from the other side. What is this one? Black unit. Okay. Uh, what about this? Gas compressor, a bigger one, right? A bigger compressor, this gas compressor. High pressure separator, look at the flange. So previously we just have the groove connection, but this is a flange. What is this thing? Line heater, high pressure, what? high pressure grab head. What is this thing? Did we talk about that? Coriolis for me, how do you spell Coriolis? Google it, okay, spell it right. <laughs> Coriolis for me, I think that's, that's about it. And we have several track over there. <laughs> All right, for the exam, we have, every time that you have choice, there is a 
uh, minus one if you did it wrong. If you don't do it, it is zero, okay? Like in the quiz. But this time, it's not the same as in the quiz in the sense that if you did it wrong, it's not A. If you did it wrong, it's zero, okay? What do you mean by negative one? Okay, I have question one, question two. Question one, question two. The correct answer is true and true. Okay. If I don't do anything, I get zero. Okay. If I put true, if I put false over there, and I put true over there, zero. I get totally zero. Okay. So guessing will result in zero. But if you guess, but you guess false and false. We get minus two, okay? <laughs> so take your chance. Do you want to guess or not? All right. Uh, I, during the past, I have found that okay, even though the expectation value is zero, so it's fifty-fifty, right? It's fifty-fifty. If you guess completely one hundred question, you should get fifty, and you get another minus fifty, so totally zero, right? That is expectation value. But in the past. Your senior student, like last year, last two years, when they guess, most of the time it's wrong. Okay? But you can guess. You can take your chance. Depending on how much you know, you have like 80% sure, then you may try it. Uh, let's do something else. Uh, average, molecular average. I think we still have 8 minutes left. Can you, do you know how to calculate average molecular average? Yes, if I give. Uh, Mass percentage, can you do that? Volume percentage, can you do that? So, um, average, what about weight? It's a weighted average based on mole fraction or volume fraction, not mass fraction. If you get mass fraction, you have to convert it to volume fraction first, okay? Uh, Mr. Lee, how much is the molecular weight of nitrogen in nitrogen gas? Nitrogen gas. Is it 14 or 28 when it's nitrogen gas? 28, okay, it's N2. Oxygen gas is not just O, it's O2, so it's 32, not 16, okay? I give it, if I need to, okay? You don't need to know all the numbers. Uh, okay, there's gas contract. So the first one is about a gas contract, right? Hydrate. By now, who don't know about this H2S, that 10 ppm is okay, but more than that, you will die. You know that, right? Okay, gas contract, why do we not need liquid? Why do we not need any oxygen inside? Okay, this you need. You know that to prevent hydrate, the reason for that. And hydrate curve, and by now, do you know why do we have hydrate? A or B? A, A right over here, have hydrate. That would be the not hydrate. So you know all this. And very important, you know how to use this chart? Model diagram? This chart, how about this chart? Do you know the unit of specific enthalpy? Okay. Unit for overall heat transfer coefficient? U value, okay, line meter, line meter has U value. What is the unit for that U value? You know that? Yeah. You should memorize it before it starts there. Okay. Uh, heat calculation, it requires, okay, we have you try any of that. Heat duty, that equation. So basically, can you size a line heater? You should be able to size a line heater. Read this chart, that is the same as, as the homework, right? So you should be fine with that. Double X, 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 pressure rating, okay? <coughs> Five volts rating, you try that. Did you do the O exam? Did you? Try, try, try to read the solution at least and give yourself zero, okay? <laughs> if you didn't do it, you give yourself zero and grade it at least read the solution. The original velocity, 
Okay, you try that. Actual velocity is under time. That equation, okay, this is one of the example to get the notion of it. 32 and 2, you see that? Try it if you still don't know how to do it. Uh, actual velocity inside the equation, do you have that in your information sheet yet? You should, okay? Um, that's how we derive at 60 LTX. Can you tell if I black out all this, you know, which is which? Maybe I don't do that much, okay? Hybrid inhibitor, Hammer-Schmidt equation. Do you memorize that yet? You see, it is in exam. Did you see that? Okay. <laughs> so Hammer-Schmidt equation. Did you try any of this? You should. Okay. And then we have. If I if I don't have it in midterm exam, I can still put it in the final exam. Uh, separator. Okay. There's an advantageous, disadvantageous. Our pressure, uh, do you know where to put the pressure relief valve on the separator? Why do we use a oh, spherical separator? Advantageous, disadvantageous, and you know that put the pressure relief valve over there is wrong. You know that now, right? One, two, three, that. Uh, three phase separator, internal component, okay? That's the internal component. We let diverter. Okay, another type of inlet diverter, this extractor, deforming element, uh, vortex eliminator, you know all those names, make sure. Okay. This uh, extractor, you know which one is more expensive than which one? No? There's a table. Okay, look. Cost, low risk, high, high S. Okay. Mesh type, type. Yes, sir. You have to know that table. You, you just have to know this. Or maybe the other line is okay too, but you know that why mesh is low cost. I ask you to read it, then not? Okay. Start of our equation, you don't need to have this coefficient, but if I give you, you need to write that equation in, okay? But the K value, everything will be given. Uh, self reading, uh, that equation uh, for the settling thing, did you try? That is same as this is a okay. What happened is you got to know how to use this chart. Even though it's super easy, but there are two parts that you have to take care of, which is gas and liquid. Even though you have enough gas capacity, you may not have enough settling volume. So you remember equation with 1440 to do the conversion for the settling volume, you need that. Okay? Like this, have the settling volume, you may have to use that and calculate if you have the required uh, retention time or not, consider more than liquid. And we have a uh, heater treater, you know how to calculate the amount of heat required by heater treater? Oh, you should go to the exam, or exam or the homework about that storage tank. People can die when open the deep hatch that you should know. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. okay. Compressor, do you know how to calculate horsepower for the compressor? Okay, you have to know this chart temperature, this chart pressure, amount of heat that has to be removed. You have to know that. Did you read the solution for the homework five or something? Okay, and there's equation for calculate the, the horsepower. You got to do that horsepower thing, okay, very likely. And all those terms, isothermal, isentropic, isochronic, isobaric, all those things, do you know that? Start to memorize, okay? Uh, what do we, we stop at pump one, right? We stop, I remember exactly that we stop just video. You have video and we stop right here. Do you know how to do this by now? The thing that has C value, you remember the C value that you have formula and calculate where is the C value? You got to do that. Okay. We have uh, 120 raw score. To calculate the actual score is your raw score divided by 120 multiplied by 30. Because 30 is a point for the meter, from the meter exam. Okay, there are two of forms, fill in the blank, and there's a fill in the blank without choice. For the one that has no choice, you don't have any, any penalty. 
Good. No more questions. Let's. We don't have class on Thursday. Yes. One twenty hour, one twenty. Yeah. <laughs> no cap, no cap. We one twenty hour. Bring one calculator, one calculator only. Okay. See you on Thursday, five p.m. All of you meet at room one ten. For those students who has two x half, one by x half, you meet at two o eight. Okay. If you have one by x half, two x half, you meet at uh, two o eight. If you have not submit.